Hey guys, in this tutorial, we're going to go through how to handle montage priorities and montage cancelling. Plus, we're going to be fixing some bugs from my previous directional rolling tutorial. If you only want to learn about montage cancelling and handling montage priorities, I will catch you up on what's happening and how we got here. So there's no need to do the directional roll tutorial if you're only interested in montage cancelling and montage priorities. I also want to note that this is about montage priorities in this specific scenario. How you handle things will be different depending on the scenario. I will begin by explaining the issue and the code we've done so far. We've coded this rolling system to be like Dark Souls. So if the player has movement input and they press the roll button, they will roll forward. If the player doesn't have movement input and they press roll, they will step backwards. We currently have two bugs where the solution involves handling montage cancelling and montage priorities. I'm going to go over and fix the first bug, then we will talk about the next one. The first bug is when we roll forward and stop moving input mid-roll and then press the roll button. The character will cancel out of the roll forward animation and step backward. So how do we fix this bug? Well, if we want to fix this bug, we're going to need to understand why it's happening. To understand why it's happening, we're going to need to go over our code and understand what it is that we are doing. First, I'll explain the macro that checks if the player has movement input. This macro is straightforward. It gets the last movement input vector and checks if it is not equal to zero. If it is not equal to zero, the return value is true. When this macro returns true, so when there's movement input from the player, we call the function play high priority montage. I created this play high priority montage function in the last video. This function has an input for the animation montage that you want to play. Then we do a check to see if the selected montage is currently playing. If it is currently playing, we do nothing. If it is not currently playing, then we play the animation montage selected as the input. In this case, the input montage is the montage we selected when we call the function. So the selected input montage will cancel over any montage that is different, but it will not cancel over the same montage. We could have coded this to only play if any montage is not playing. However, the reason we created a function to play a high priority montage is because a roll forward should be a high priority montage in this case, which means we want this montage to be able to cancel over other ones, while not being able to cancel over itself. You might be wondering why. Well, there will be certain scenarios where we will want to cancel out of the current montage into the roll. I'll use Sekiro as an example for this scenario. In Sekiro, during the beginning frames of the attack animation, the player can cancel out of the attack and into the dodge. However, at the ending frames of the animation, they must commit to the attack, and the dodge animation is played after the attack animation finishes. With this in mind, we want to keep the roll forward as a high priority montage, but the step back can be lower priority since it's only supposed to happen when the player isn't moving. If they're not moving, then no montage should be playing anyway. So then we know that we can just duplicate the play high priority montage function and rename it to something like try play in a montage. Now all we need to do is remove the input montage from montages playing. So this pure function will return true if any montage is playing. So the animation montage in this case will only play if any montage is not currently playing. Delete the play high priority montage function and drag out the try play and a montage function. And don't forget to set the anim play rate to 1. Now the bug that allowed the step back montage to cancel out of the roll forward montage to be fixed. Let's go ahead and test it out. So I roll forward and I let go of movement input and I press roll again and the step back montage is not canceling out of the roll forward montage. So that issue has been fixed. However, now the opposite issue is happening. When we step back and then give movement input and press the roll button, the character will cancel out of the step back animation and into the roll animation. Why is this happening? Well, to understand why, let's go over our code. So what happens is, when the player gives movement input midway through the step backwards montage, the code will check, is there movement input? If that is true, it will do another check. Is the montage we set as the input in the play high priority montage function playing? In this case, it won't because it will be midway through the step backwards montage. So it cancels out of the step backwards montage midway through and plays the roll forwards montage. The solution is simple. Before we roll forwards or step backwards, we need to do a check to see if the step back montage is currently playing. If it is, do nothing. If it is not, continue on with the rolling decision. So to check if the step backwards montage is playing, just get the mesh, drag out from there, get anim instance, drag out from there, Montage is playing. And then we need a branch. And now we just need to select the step back montage as the montage. 
Okay, and if the step back montage is not playing, then continue on. Okay, and now all the bugs should be fixed. Let's go ahead and test it out. Okay, so we know we already fixed the bug where if we roll forward and press step backwards, it cancels out the roll forward and just step backwards. So that's fixed. Now I'm going to step backwards and then press move input and see if he cancels out of the step backwards into the roll forwards. As you can see, he doesn't cancel out of the step backwards into the roll forwards. So both of the bugs have now been fixed. Now I'm going to talk about how to reset things after canceling out of a montage. There may be many things you need to reset after canceling out of a montage, but I'm going to use attacking as an example. I'm not going to teach attack combinations in this video. There are multiple places that you can find here on YouTube that can teach you that. Or you can check the character blueprint for one of the Paragon characters. The way I've coded the attack combinations works the exact same way as the Paragon characters. This attack combination system relies on booleans and integers, so if any one of these aren't reset, this system will break. The way it's currently set up, this continued chain event is called with an animation notify, and so is the reset combo function. Since the reset is called with an animation notify near the end of the attack animation, if you cancel out of the attack and into the roll midway through the attack, the reset notify will never fire. I'm going to demonstrate the bug to you now. So if I cancel out of the attack and roll midway through the attack animation, I won't be able to attack anymore because the reset function was never called. So as you can see, I'm pressing the attack button and absolutely nothing is happening. Go into the third person character, make sure third person character is selected as debug and we can see exactly what's going on. So as you can see, is attacking is set to true even though I'm not attacking. But that's not the only issue we would have. Without the attack count being reset, then it wouldn't play the proper animation montage. So how do you fix this? There are many ways you could handle this issue. You could just add the reset notify to every animation you want to cancel out of the attack with. Or you could only allow the character to cancel during times where this bug won't happen. However, those solutions are hacky ways of handling it. We want a graceful way to handle it that isn't hard to manage. For a more graceful solution, there are multiple ways you could approach this. For example, on the action where you want to cancel out of the attack, you could simply call the reset function. Or at the end of each attack in the combination, you could create a retriggerable delay. Then multiply the montage link by 0 0.8, which means the reset function will always be called after 80% of the attack animation duration. For this particular scenario I recommend both solutions. You can use a retriggerable delay to call the function that resets the variables for all low priority montages. But for high priority montages it's best to call the reset function as soon as the action begins. So that means calling the function in the code as soon as the action begins. Now we're going to go ahead and implement the solutions for this issue. We're going to start out with a retriggerable delay solution for the low priority montages. So drag out from the end of play high priority montage and type in retriggerable delay. Then from the montage length, float times float. Plug that into the duration, I'm gonna multiply that by 0 0.8, so it's 80% of the montage length. And on complete, we want to simply call the reset combo function. And we can do this for every single attack in the combination. Okay, now let's test it out. So if we cancel out of the attack into the roll midway through the attack animation, we should still be able to attack. And as you can see, we can still attack. That bug is now fixed. But for the high priority montage, you should call the reset combo function at the beginning. Now we have fixed all the bugs and I've gone through a lot of what you need to manage when handling montage priorities and montage canceling. If you have any trouble understanding anything that I've been explaining in this video, then leave a comment down below or join our Discord server. The link will be in the description. Thanks for watching, like the video if the tutorial ended up helping you, and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more tutorials in the future.